hello friends so in this session on statistics we are going to deal with another method of finding arithmetic mean of a given data set okay so uh, we are going to discuss something called step division method so in the previous two sessions we saw direct method we also saw uh, assumed mean method which is also called shortcut method in this session we are going to study step division method we'll explain with an example and then we'll also try to derive the formula of step division method okay now as i told you in the last class or last session where we discussed uh, the assumed mean method the problem was the problem with the direct method was if the values of the variable is quite large okay and the frequency also is quite large then what happens the calculation of xi fi that is if we multiply all the values with respective frequencies uh, the multiplication becomes quite cumbersome so hence to uh, address that issue because in the you know earlier era there was no computer or calculator so when statistics methods st statistical method were discovered or um, formulated then there was no uh, calculator and computer so hence people uh, derived easier methods of simplifying the process so that's what uh, the objective is so in the previous uh, assumed mean method you saw we reduced the calculation load in step division method also we go one step further and simplify calculation a little bit more how do i do it so as we found out di in uh, the assumed mean method where we had to assume a a mean of the given data set and we in this example we have assumed that 300 is the assumed mean i told you last session also that you have to pick up a in such a way that your you know the, the a lies somewhere in between the low lowest and the maximum values of the variables so if you see the lowest possible value is 240 here and the highest is 350 so somewhat in the middle i have taken 300 you might argue that it is not the mean of 240 and 350 as well but then I have taken 300 purposefully because it is it will be easier for me to subtract 300 from various numbers so now if you see i have subtracted 240 i have uh, subtracted 300 from 240 to get minus 60 so these are my di's i have calculated di's and now one step further is you assume another value h which which is let's say 10 okay so you have to assume one value h such and what, what what is the purpose so we are going to dis, uh, divide all these di's by this value h and why are we doing it and uh, it will become a little while you know uh, after a little while that it is simplifying my calculation so whatever di's i found out i divided that further with h right so i have purposefully chosen a value n because division by 10 will be easier you can also choose multiples of uh, 20 hundreds depending upon the case so in this case i just want uh, one digit uh, decimal or let's say you know uh, numbers at unit space and that will be all so in this case what we have done is we have divided all the di's by h so that all these numbers are further reduced so if you can see minus 60 is reduced to minus 6 44 reduces to minus uh, minus 44 reduces to minus 4.4 and so on and so forth now if you notice multiplying these ui's with frequency values it must much easier than multiplication of these frequency values with either di's or xi's themselves isn't it so hence now you see the calculation becomes much easier so if you see how i have calculated fi ui now it becomes much simpler and then i have some summed all these fi ui's to get minus 11.2 here now once I get that, what is the formula of x bar? x bar is nothing but a, that is assumed mean. This is assumed mean, assumed mean, assumed mean, and this h into summation fi ui divided by summation fi. Okay, so now if you deploy the values in this formula, you will again get 295.85. Now the question arises how do you arrive at this kind of a formula? Right? So let us see. Now, what is what was ui? Ui was given as uh, xi minus a by h, isn't it? If you see here, it's di ui is di by h, and di is nothing but xi minus a. So xi minus a upon h. So hence, guys, can I not write this as ui h is equal to xi minus a? or i can then say 
that what can I say about this I can say uh, x i is equal to a plus u i h isn't it now what was x bar from direct method x bar was summation f i x i from i equals 1 to n divided by summation f i from again i is equal to 1 to n right so what is summation f i x i so let us replace x i by this value okay so what can i get i will get i equals 1 to n f i stays as it is and x i is replaced by a plus u i times h and the entire thing is divided by summation f i i is equal to 1 to n okay now i told you that we can you know uh, within the summation i can simplify it further so i is equal to 1 n this is nothing but f i times a plus f i u i times h isn't it f i u i times h divided by summation f i from i is 1 to i to n okay now if there are two terms within the summation we can split the summation we learned this in the previous session itself so summation this will be i is equal to 1 to n f i a plus summation so these two terms with the plus sign separated by the uh, plus sign will be broken into two terms so 1 to n again and this is f i u i h divided by summation i is equal to 1 to n f i okay if you split these two terms the fraction then you will get summation f i a i equals 1 to n divided by summation f i i is equal to 1 to n plus plus what summation i is equal to 1 to n f i u i h divided by summation i is equal to 1 to n f i okay so these are the rules of summation so if there are two summations and divide by same denominator so i split the fraction now what is this term the left hand side this term what is this if you see a is constantly multiplied to all the fi so hence we learned in the last class as well that this a can be brought out of the summation because it's a constant so summation fi i is equal to 1 to n i is equal to 1 to n and then divided by summation i is equal to 1 to n f i and then this is plus again here also h can be brought out so h is h is a constant so h is brought out after within you know uh, before the summation sign so i is equal to 1 to n and this is f i u i so all those constant terms which are being multiplied by multiplied with all the variables within the summation sign can be brought out okay so this is my final term now what will happen if you see this i summation f i and this is the same thing so hence it can be written as a plus h is outside and then summation what is the formula now we arrived at 1 to n f i u i divided by summation f i i is equal to 1 to n isn't it if you see this is what the formula which we used to calculate the mean and the mean came out to be 295.85 this is the formula we just derived here is the derivation okay if you are wondering how did we operate on summation so i'll just do a quick recap of rules of summation so let us say if i have summation uh, a x i where a is a constant and i is let's say varying from 1 to n this is nothing but a x 1 plus a x 2 plus a x 3 plus so on and so forth till a x n isn't it this is what summation means now if you see you can pull a common and you can write a x 1 plus x 2 plus dot dot till x n is it not so hence a and this x 1 plus x 2 plus x n can be written as summation i is equal to 1 to n x i right so hence 
summation a x i is nothing but a times summation x i. So a can be brought out of the summation term. The other thing which you might be wondering how did it happen is let's say if i is equal to 1 to n and let us say we have x i plus y i y i and this means what x1 plus y1 plus x2 plus y2 plus x3 plus y3 plus so on and so forth till xn plus yn so this can be written as x1 plus x2 plus so on and so forth till xn rearranging plus y1 plus y2 plus so on and so forth till yn which can be then written as summation xi from i is equal to 1 to n plus summation yi from i is equal to 1 to n so this these two these two rules i explained because we use this in the above derivation so if you can see i had to split this correct so if there is two terms within the summation so it can be broken down into two sums like this and then i had used one more to pull out the a's for example here if you see this a I have pulled this a out this was a constant and similarly if h is there so I can pull the constant out of the summation which I just proved here okay so these three two rules were used of you know to derive arrive at the final formula hope you understood the method thank you